So I had some custom address signs made for my warehouse and my house and I wanted to build like a really cool backer board with a built-in planter to mount it to and I've just been playing around with some designs from scratch. I really like the idea of a diagonal white background to give this some contrast. I have built a version of this before just to mount this on, but I've never done one with a planter with some depth to it. So I am gonna try it. I sketched it out on the computer. I'm gonna cut this board out. Originally, I was thinking I would try some furring strips or some sort of wood that I would use for the diagonal to maybe stain and then whitewash. But I've been using this really cool PVC trim that is just ready to go it's amazing i mean it's trim but it's made out of plastic and it acts like wood you can cut it and you don't have to paint it and i've been using it f as fascia and trim pieces for my chicken coops and i figured i'm gonna just give it a shot even though I i'm hoping it's gonna work because this is not super cheap but if I don't like it, it's kind of a lot of pieces wasted. So I'm going to maybe start with some scraps that I have to just see if I like the look of it. And if so, then I'm going to build the whole planter out of it. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, I did have enough scraps to do the frame and the box, but <laughs> I had like two or three miscuts because I'm still getting used to adding length for miters and I screwed up. So I had to break out one new piece to figure this out. But basically this is a big jigsaw puzzle and I had to reverse engineer how I want this to go. So I've got my little short side of the planters, the bottom of the planter, and then the face. This is all going to mount to the back if this works, so this will be the, the planter. And then this is going to just frame the edges here. So I was thinking of just using adhesive to put this together, but I may just try some shooting my brad nailers, how I was using these to finish on the chicken coop. So I may try it. And then the idea is once all of this is assembled and mounted to here, then I'm gonna cut diagonal strips and they're gonna inlay. It's gonna be recessed a tiny bit. Let me see if I can find some scrap. So imagine this cut so that it, you know, frames it. And then this is gonna sit behind. There's gonna be a bunch of there. And so it'll just inset to give it a little bit of depth there. So I, feel like I'm gonna like it enough to proceed and start cutting into real pieces instead of scrap. But before I do that, I need to be convinced that I can get this assembled securely and attached to this. If I can do that, then this is gonna be the strategy. And we're just gonna go PVC, and maybe put tiny little gaps between the diagonal pieces so you can see that it's slatted. And I think this would be much cleaner than doing it with the wood because then I won't have to try to whitewash it and make it look cool. But I'm going to keep going and see what happens. More progress. Working in the dark now. I cannot believe how smoothly that went. So I just used my 16 gauge Ryobi finish nailer and perfectly aligned to the edge of the plywood. I didn't think it would stay, but that stayed perfectly. Those are in there solid. So I didn't have to use any adhesive. I was thinking about maybe going back and doing some adhesive here, but I think I'm just gonna shoot on the sides to make sure these mitered corners stick together that are showing. These are not gonna really be showing. This is gonna go on the face. This is my little planter box area. I'm torn about what I should do, 
how I should have fixed this. Um, I just had a little snafu. Don't work when you're tired and it's dark and mix up your two finished nailers. I put 16 gauge <laughs> brads in my 18 gauge nailer and jammed it up really well. So I had to take the whole thing apart and clear the jam. Now I just tested a piece and the 18 gauge hole is a bit smaller. I don't love the idea of tacking these in with it because you'll be able to see them, but I don't really know of another way to do it. And I think, you know, you're not gonna be looking at this thing up close. So I think I may just go for it. But I'm really happy with how that's working. So I don't know if I'll get to diagonal cuts tonight because I still have a ton of work to do. But this is turning out smoother than I thought for this PVC trim method. And I hope it looks as cool as I envision it when I start cutting the diagonal backgrounds. So let's see if I can get this on cleanly and go from there. I am so thrilled with how this is turning out. I wasn't paying attention at all to my battery life, so my phone died while I was doing these few diagonal cuts. It took me a little while to get in my groove. It's a lot of math. Math is not my strong suit. So I finally figured out the calculation that these need to be cut. And I can kind of fudge it a little because there's gonna be plants and stuff in here. So they don't need to be perfect, but I'm now approaching this part where they're gonna need to be exact. So. I'm going to pack it up for the night because I have a bunch of work to do still and I'm tired, but I'm really, really happy with how this is turning out. I think this is going to work perfectly. I fixed the front with an, my 18 gauge finish nailer and you can hardly see the holes. They're really small when you're looking at it from far away. So just to give you an idea, this, once this is all filled in, I'm going to, I need to figure out the exact spacing between these because again I can fudge it for now but I need it to be perfect once they're all visible so I'm gonna figure out my spacer so that it's exact I'm gonna tack these down with maybe some quad or some adhesive that's strong that can last outdoors and then I think I will even after the adhesive just tack the ends with my finish nailer to make sure they stay in place and then I don't even have to paint or anything. This PVC trim is amazing. And then, once everything is perfect, this is gonna mount on top. I have the extended hooks so the, it'll actually be raised off of it a little bit. And I don't know, maybe I'm gonna get crazy and see if I can find a battery backlit strip that I can is narrow enough to do that so that at night, it's backlit from behind. But. I don't think that's necessary. It's a little over the top since it's going on a building where there's going to be light nearby, but I'm really happy. I can't wait to finish this. Now I just need to clean up and figure out how to get my tractor in here really quickly and quietly so I don't wake up the kids, but to be continued. I think this is a really good rainy day project. This is something I can do in the shop, so this might not be finished until... Um, the next rainy day, but I'm really excited.